I'm sorry yeah. we're having some technical difficulties. It happens. This, this is why when you watch television, it's never live, right? Because it, things get screwed up. Yeah, it happens. Right? And then Crystal's over there snapping like a dry twig. She is like, <laughs> I, I, she, Crystal's our director. And uh, I tell you right now, she's not married. Uh, but if she was married, she would go home and kick the living snot out of her husband. Because she is worked up uh, over there over something. We have a great show tonight, right, Vic? Yeah, I'm very excited for tonight. Very excited. So we have, we have tonight yeah. our biggest announcement by far. Yeah. Our biggest announcement will be tonight. We're not yeah. going to tell you about it right now. We're going to let you work up to that. But it is definitely, right? I'm very excited for the announcement. I'm very excited for the announcement. Yeah. And it's been a long time coming. Right? Yeah. We'll get into it. But first, we have to talk about my unbelievable jacket. Yeah, your, your, your Yellowstone jacket. Uh, it's my Yellowstone jacket. Are you watching Yellowstone, people? Is Are you watching? watching Yellowstone? Oh, let me tell you. Every yeah. time I put this jacket on, I want to have Casey kill somebody. Every time. If you haven't watched the show, Yellowstone is the Kevin Costner show, and it's about the West, right? In Montana. It's about Montana. Yeah. That's the West. And, uh, <laughs> and I love the show. Yeah. It's a soap opera with cowboys and Indians. And shooting. Lots of shooting. Yeah, lots of shooting. In 2020, I find that shows that have a lot of people getting murdered off mm -hmm. make me happier. You find it refreshing? It's refreshing. <laughs> you find it refreshing? Yeah, yeah. because it's, it, they're not talking about it. No one's wearing a mask. No? Mm -mm. Yeah, they're just out there living their life. People get hung and everybody knows about it and everyone's like, look what happened to you, mister... Yeah. yeah, like it's just, Are you watching yeah. the show, young lady? Oh, you got to. Listen it's a to me. Good show. There's some bad stuff. You're too young to watch it. You got to watch it when your father's asleep. It looks like he goes to sleep early. So, well, look at the difference between how they're dressed. You're like in a full North Face parka. Yeah. And she's in a, like a flimsy sweatshirt. Worst father in North America right yeah. there. Look at him. He's, <laughs> He's got long like, jobs. I'm only concerned about me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Where honey. Grab you? your sweatshirt. <laughs> So I love the show Yellowstone. Yeah, you do. And are, are we what you call, are we binge watching that? No, binge watching. So our, our friend Kathy Caruso just posted that they literally just started and they're, they're ready for season four. Watching one episode every five days isn't binge watching, Vinny. Yeah, well, I just That's feel not like, binge watching. What, what is binge watching? You when you sit down and watch one whole season in like two nights or oh. one night. So, in other words, if you watch the Jets play one game and they lost, that would be binge watching because they're going to lose all the other yeah, games. Too. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I got it. Well, I, I love it and I want to live out west now. I, I knew that 10 minutes into the first season. Yeah. Like the first episode. Yeah, because I like Cowboys. Yeah. Right? There's the only problem I have with the show. And I, this is, I don't even know if I'm not woke when I say this, but I think it's pretty accurate. None, because there's Indians. Uh, American and, Indians. Huh? American Indians. You don't need to point that out. It's well, Montana. <laughs> I don't know. No there's, no, there's Edison and Montana are two entirely different. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> Edison, 
If you rode through Edison on a horse, that would be... <laughs> but in the Indians, uh, the Indians, in any show, they have, I have never seen a, a person of American Indian descent laugh. They're very stoic. Everything is stoic. Nobody's laughing in the whole show, though. Well, that's true, too, but I mean, they're just so deep all the time. They, the, the river fed us. All yeah. right, come on, just go swimming. Yeah. Well, Vinny loved the show so much that he's like, I love Kevner Costner's jeans. I, I want to buy those jeans. And then, like a girl, he looked it up online and was like, they're custom-made. So now, after Christmas, I, I need a pair of custom-made jeans. I want a pair of... Yeah. Kevin Costner's ass looks amazing for a man yeah. that age. <laughs> when you see him in the jeans, he looks incredible. Now, I found out those jeans are made by Carter, mm -hmm. which is, I think, the same company that makes baby clothes, right? I don't know. You're the one that did the research. It seems like it wouldn't be an easy lookup either, like the fact that you know all of this. I, mean, I am not the only man. Googling Kevin Cosner. I might be the only man. I'm not the only person. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm not the only person. Because when you type in Kevin Cosner's jeans from Yellowstone auto populates. Mm -hmm. and, and they're made by Carter. And they look great. And I also will tell you that his boots, uh, you should just get me the whole getup. Yeah, I, I think I should. I'm telling you, I would wear that getup. I wear a cowboy hat now anyway, and you hate it. I do, because we live in New Jersey. You look silly. You look so stupid. But we have a ranch. We have... We don't have a ranch. We have animals. We have chickens. That doesn't make us a Montana farm. No, but we're a jerk. You still need a cowboy hat. First of all, I have a thing. You know I have a thing for cowboy hats. That, like, I, if I ran Victoria's Secret, there'd be a whole cowboy hat division. Yeah, yeah. I brought you a cowboy hat home from Utah. Okay, our kids are watching? <laughs> at home. It doesn't matter. That's they never wore the damn hat. I, <laughs> most disappointing thing. I, I've worn it myself, uh, <laughs> which was weird. Anyway, if you're not watching Yellowstone, watch Yellowstone. It's, it's really great, right? Yeah, it's a good and show. I want to get cast. Show. So I'm going to ask people watching the show to please write Kevin Cosner and say, put Vinny. I didn't care. Just let me in and let Case hang me. One episode. That's all I want to do. Right. Casey hang you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I got my haircut. I see yeah. you looking at it. So <laughs> Kevin Cosner's haircut is very similar to the haircut I'm now wearing. I'm in full fanboy mode. Yeah, you are. Do you and, like and the haircut? I do. And why don't you tell them, since you're in fanboy mode, what you did this week with our daughter? What? What what'd you, you did this week with our daughter? Oh, I did. Yeah. Well, I had to because I'm watching Yellowstone. So I took my 17-year-old to the shooting range. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, have you ever shot a... Uh, uh, oh, I'll bring you. It's so much fun. <laughs> this is the part that bothered me. I brought my 17-year-old down to Sure Shot yeah. in Lakewood. Mm -hmm. And Sure Shot is the greatest shooting range ever. Because every time I'm in there, there is an old Hasidic woman Jew buying a pistol. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. They're very funny because they go in... And this time, I don't know if I told you this, a woman brought her pistol in, fully loaded, and just put it up on the counter and said, it's not working right. And the whole place went ballistic. Yeah. Because she's, and she's I only drove from Lakewood. So uh, we, we went shooting, and Tabby is a really scary, good shot. Yeah, she's been watching cop shows for years. 17 years old, 9 millimeter, uh, and a 357 Magnum, mm -hmm. and a rifle and a shotgun, and she put at about 20 yards with a nine millimeter, one-handed, I don't, a lot of you look aghast. I didn't realize how many of you voted for Biden. Anyway, the thing is, <laughs> uh, she, put, she, put, she put 20 rounds on target, but the best part was the guy from the range comes up, he goes, oh, honey, let me show you what to do, and he showed her one time, she goes, I think I have it, and then she went up with one hand, and the guy goes, use two hands. She's up to try one. And then she just unloaded nine shots right into the target. Yeah, it was like a circle that she did. Like, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. She brought yeah. it home. And then I realized she wrote her friend's... There's a boy that she... Yeah, and she wrote someone's name on it and then did a circle around it. <laughs> she, she wrote his name 
And they're not dating, right? They're not dating, but I think she could be cast on, uh, on Yellowstone more uh, than you. I, I can tell you this. <laughs> the thing I thought about was, all right, now we sleep with one eye open, and <laughs> this kid is dangerous. She's dangerous. She can shoot. Yeah. Are you going to go shoot with me this week? Yeah, I'll go. You don't like it? I don't, I, I don't know. It's fine. It there's, hurts my back standing there. There's nothing there. more American than just sending steel through a paper target. It's really loud. I, 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 just, I don't enjoy it. Maybe we could take the bullets and throw them at the target yeah. so it's not as loud for you. Yeah, probably. Vicky goes to shoot, and she said, I would enjoy this more if I could sit down and have a server. That's not shooting. Vicky. More of a night out, yeah. Huh? I don't know. All right, so we'll, we'll take a shooting. And yeah. can I tell them about the time you shot the AR-15? Yeah, that was with Brewer. It was with Jim Brewer. Yep. And his wife. Yeah, we who's, went. Who enjoys shooting way too much. She likes, yeah, Jim Brewer's wife likes to shoot. Mm -hmm. Oh, she likes to shoot, and she's good too. Yeah. Now, Vicky didn't want to shoot the AR-15. If you never shot one, uh, and I'm hoping most of you haven't, uh, if you haven't shot, have you shot one? Yes. Fun, right? Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Are you a good shot? <laughs> How old are you? 22, sir. Okay, well, if my daughter and you went shooting, she would... <laughs> you'd be full of holes, okay? <laughs> so when you shot the Air 15, you liked that? It was an experience, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not like, woo! I'm shooting a gun! I, I, I find it very unnerving. Vicky, I've been with you for, for a long time. You're not woo about a lot of things. <laughs> you don't wear the cowboy hat. You don't enjoy shooting. I should have married that broad on Yellowstone. Yeah, you should have. The daughter. The <laughs> yeah. daughter on Yellowstone is saucy. Yeah, she walks is Walks around saucy. naked. Yeah. You guys say, when she walks around naked, you got to turn your eyes. Avert your eyes. Yeah. She walks around naked a lot. I don't mean to tell your kid to watch bad stuff. I apologize. You, of course, will go home and immediately download Yellowstone. <laughs> so let's give them the announcement because yeah, it's big ahead. news. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so I am, I have... Three kids from my previous marriage. That's right. And we have three together. That's right. And that's what I do. Every woman that I marry gets three babies. And <laughs> that's the Vinnie Brand guarantee. If I, if I marry a woman, right, she gets yeah. three. And we found out on what night? On Thursday night, my stepson took us out to dinner. Yeah. Um, just the three of us. Hey, Grandpa. Uh, Yep, you are correct. We are, we gonna, are gonna be grandparents, we're gonna be everybody. Grandparents. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And and that's let me tell you something. I'm excited to be a grandfather. Yeah. Right? And he, he took us out, took us to a nice dinner, and th what he did was hysterical. He goes, mm -hmm. I have a business plan. And he laid out this ridiculous business plan and he asked for twenty three thousand dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said he needed it by the end of December, which I'm like, okay. This is, <laughs> this is crappy. <laughs> and then he goes, I got the plane in the car, and he brought us in a wrapped picture frame right. with the word grandparents and all the definition under it, and Vicky cried for 20 minutes in a row. Yep. You're I'm excited, so right? so excited. We love his girlfriend, and she's a gem, and he's, she's a, so, she's he's great. such a good boy. I'm very, really excited. I know, yeah. and you know what I like? I like the fact that you're going to be a very young Sexy grandma. All right, now you're just taking it weird and again. Our kids are watching. <laughs> I have a fantasy about a grandmother in a cowboy hat. That, and I'll tell you something right now. I, that's why I got the haircut too. I want to look younger right away. Okay. Because what, <laughs> what I want to do now is lose weight, get abs. Uh -huh. So when I'm carrying my grandbaby, people think it's mine. That's oh, my. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's your goal. Okay. Yeah, that's my goal. This is the first baby in my house that I didn't personally make. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's very exciting. Yeah. So we're going to be grandparents. That's our big news for the day. And thank you. Thank you. June. June. Yeah. June. Right? And we find out in a couple of days the big, the, the, the gender. gender reveal. Yeah, because nowadays you can find out super early. Right. Like you don't have to wait till like midway through. And when you go to a gender reveal today in 2020, it's no big deal. If you're not getting what you like, you can change it. <laughs> Later on, you just get what you want. <laughs> Is that, am I in trouble for that one? Yeah, you're definitely not woke. <laughs> you're definitely All right, not we have woke. a great show tonight. Mike yeah. Gaffney's here tonight. <laughs> it's time to meet the band. Yeah. It is time to, you know I love these guys. Light the band up for me, Crystal. And um, 
You know I love these guys. Every single week since we found Joe Coonan, they get better and better and better. The single sold a lot last week. Is that right, Joe? Step up to the mic, Joe. Step up to the mic. And, uh, and Joe, now you were, you, were, uh, you were without your keyboard player, right? And we have a substitute bass player, yeah. right? Because yeah, man, he's real tired. Yeah. What happened to our bass player? Uh, he's under the weather. I yeah. heard he's got, yeah. can we say what he has? Sure, go for it. Okay, now everyone's gonna, everyone right away thought, oh, he's got the COVID. No, he's got mononucleosis like a real band member would. Got mono and the clap and... I don't know about the second part, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every band member gets the clap. By the way, you look that up when you get home. Now... No, <laughs> not, not true. <laughs> so, Joe, I, I want you to play. Now, now, what are you doing for the holidays? You doing anything big? You know, just hanging with the fam, keeping it small. And uh, usually we go and see extended family, but uh, we're, yeah, we're keeping it small and simple this year. So. Keeping it small, right? You're afraid to have people over the house? Not afraid. We're just, you know, we're playing it safe. And, and are Vicky and I going to be invited to the house at any point? Uh, there's not enough room. You wouldn't be able to fit, honestly. <laughs> That's so crappy. Joe. If you bring booze, though, you can come. Uh, I want you to come down to our house and bring the band. Uh, but not the kid with mono, and um, yeah. and come play, right? Yeah. Now tomorrow, that'd Joe, be great. I would love that. Yeah. We'll do a, we'll do a party at the house. We'll bring the five finger bassist, and um, what's the bass player's name? Greg. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he's fantastic. Everybody you bring is great, right or wrong? And I, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Joe, get grab your guitar. What are you gonna play for us now? You gonna play the single? <laughs> don't answer me if you don't want to. Uh, <laughs> what are you playing? Joe, can I tell you something funny? I was, What's up, man? I was talking to one of our, our fans online, and they said they love when I talk to Joe because Joe just doesn't answer what he doesn't want to answer, <laughs> does what he wants, picks on me, tells me no. What are you playing right now? Yeah, we're going to do the single, uh, Year Long Street Fight. I love it. This is Joe's brand new single, Year Long Street Fight. Please welcome Joe Coonan and the Hungry Hounds, everybody.
the surface I'll keep moving on hey. Now if the money's worth it The you do not deserve it I'll keep moving on Keep it the same. It's it doesn't matter. It's better. It's it's better and different every time. I love it. I love it, Joe. Yeah, so and, good. Yeah, so come good. on, clap. It's hard for me not to improvise. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. And Joe, they can buy that on iTunes. Is that right? Yeah, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music. Right. So listen, you gotta go down and do us a favor and download the song. It's called Year Long Street Fight. I promise you this: that band is gonna be famous. And we will get no credit for it. Nothing. <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. I'll Not true, right man. Come on. We'll, you know. You know, Joe, I love you so much. Give them a big round of applause. We're getting ready to play Pop Quiz, everybody. Woo! So listen up. Here's what we're doing. We're going to play Pop Quiz right now. We have three contestants. They're playing for great prizes. We're going to set it up really super fast. Yeah. And you three contestants, you should know who you are. And let's have some fun with it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's set it up. All right. <laughs> So our first contestant, we asked everybody to write a little something about themselves. Likes music prior to 1990. You'd probably hang out with Vinny well then. Like comedy, dancing, what is that? Dining pot? What is that? Cowboy called? hats. Probably. Shore, boating, skiing, traveling. Something sky. Holy Lord, contestants, yeah. we just need something to say. You yeah, don't give us a whole one biography. Thing, one thing. God almighty, what a boring thing. All, All right. right, so where's Donna Story? Donna Story coming up. Woo! Give her a big round of applause. Donna Story. Uh, we know a little bit about Donna Story. All right, you're going to come right up to here, come Donna. Come all the way over here, Donna, and you're going to speak right into the microphone. And uh, I see you like music from the 90s and sweaters from the 70s. Now... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah. Seriously, you're way ahead of the ugly Christmas sweater curve. Now, Donna, <laughs> huh? I'm teasing. Our next contestant, Vicky. Okay, so our next contestant, where is Desiree and Gregory? Desiree, come on up, Desiree. All right, Desiree, you're going to be up because your hand shot up. Come on up, Desiree. Come on, Desiree. She likes watching TV. Well, they filled it out together. They like watching TV, movies, comedy shows. What does that say, safely? Keeping each other company. Oh, that's so cute. I think she's talking about me. I'm not sure. <laughs> nice to have you on board. You've been here for the show before. It's very nice to see you. Hello. Talking to the microphone. Talk to the microphone. Thank you so much for having us. You're yeah. very welcome. Thing, we said we'd like to do things together, and the first thing you did was separate us. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you can't be a team. Okay. You can't be a team. You'd have an advantage right. over Donna and our next contestant. It's very nice to have yeah. you on board. Now, I, I forgot that, Donna, how old are you? Vinny, that's rude. Now, 
Don't answer. How old? Don't 21 answer. 21 and a half plus a whole lot of other numbers. Yeah. How old? <laughs> 21 and a half. 21 and a half. That's some hard living right there. <laughs> plus a whole lot of numbers. Okay. I get How old are you, Desiree? I'm 25 plus shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That definitely did not come Amazon Prime. All right, next up. <laughs> All right, and our next one is, whoa, she really wrote a lot. Like, what dirty. <laughs> Ginger, Ginger Povich. Yeah, she likes dirty martinis, umbrella drinks, 80s music, comedy shows, no fetishes. Whoa. <laughs> Except I like to mix my M&Ms with Skittles. Right. Well, no. that's a fetish. Hello. Okay. And beach and sunbathing. Come on right. up, Ginger. Come on up, Ginger. Now, I'm going to tell you something I know that the audience does not know. Yeah. Ginger and Donna are sisters. Is that right? That's right. Oh. Yes. Yes. That, so <laughs> this is the first time ever on yeah. Pop Quiz that we have had three sisters on the show. <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. So here's how it works, guys. Pay close attention. Oh, and, and by the way, Ginger, we get to talk to you. Are you older or younger than Donna? I'm the youngest. Huh? I'm the same age as you. Just talk into the microphone. I'm the same age as you. Okay, Ginger's the same age as you, and Donna's the youngest. Uh, Donna's the youngest. If you believe that. Yeah. How yeah. old are you, Ginger? Vinny. I'm age as you. Vicky, nobody cares. Yeah, look, look at her. She's 17 years old. All three of these women, this is long in the rearview mirror. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay. I apologize. You're uh, all beautiful. 57. I turned 60 this year. 60 this year? Congratulations. I had my sweet 60, but COVID. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Good for you. All right. I don't need to know your ages. Here's how pop quiz works. We have a bunch of questions, and when we ask a question, the first person with their hand up in the air gets to answer the question. Some of the questions you'll have to answer in a question, like Jeopardy. All right? Some just give the answer, and if you don't know the answer and you raise your hand, you lose a point. I just made that up. No, you, just someone else gets a chance to try and take the point. This is one of our favorite game shows. So We have to say what they're playing for. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. All right, Crystal, let's show them what they're playing for. Take a look at the monitors, and let's see what you're competing for. Ooh, that is downtown New Brunswick. I say it every week. It looks so nice. It looks so nice, but it's New Brunswick, and it doesn't matter. That is the Heldridge Hotel. The Heldridge Hotel is beautiful. Show the room inside. Look at that. If any one of you win this prize, you can take your significant other to the room and tell them no all night long. Congratulations. <laughs> Too old for that crap. Now, what else are they playing for? Our favorite restaurant, Salt. Salt, right across the street. Salt. Go ahead, Vicky, tell them. It is a delicious seafood place. They're setting up their Christmas decorations right now as we speak. They're setting up their Christmas decorations, and that's mm -hmm. really important because any day now, you'll just be able to walk by the window. They'll be closed. You won't be able to go inside. <laughs> now, I'm only kidding. Right, the governor? All right, what else are they playing for? A oh, night out to the stress factory, of course. A <laughs> night out at the club. We need to self-promote. Our top prize winner will get a night at the Heldridge Hotel. Yep. They'll get dinner at Salt. And then all expense paid night here, drinking whatever they want, right? That's yeah, right. Absolutely. And then what's second place, Vicki? Uh, second place is a $100 gift card to the Stress Factory. A $100 gift card. And third place? It's a $50 gift card. We were doing rounds of drinks, but for kids, it didn't work out for them because yep. then they didn't have anything. <laughs> and also third place gets whisked away for a night out in Patterson, New Jersey. All right, let's go. <laughs> That's a joke. That's terrible. Patterson's not a fun place. Here we go. You got the first question, Vicky. Okay. Now, remember, uh, remember, ladies. I would normally say girls, but that's inappropriate. Remember, ladies. <laughs> the first hand up, get the shot at it. Speak directly into the microphone. Let's go. Okay. Which state was the 50th state to join the union? Donna. Hawaii. Very good. Donna got that one. I think we asked that question two weeks ago. I think we asked two weeks ago. I think we should... Right? No, I don't think so. This next one, this next one is much harder, but mm -hmm. all three of them uh, should be able to get it. Who immediately followed Richard Nixon as president of the United States? Ford. All right, Donna, if you could not give the answer like you're bored. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> this is Donna. Ford, next. I'm too young to remember that. Oh. <laughs> That's some fighting words right there. Go ahead, Vicky. 
Get your hand up fast, you two, because Donna seems to be a know-it-all. That's what happens when you have no social life and you just get to read all day long. Go ahead. Okay. Finish this song. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 drummers drumming. Go ahead, Desiree. 11, 11 lords are leaping. No. no. <laughs> Anybody else? You're already out. <laughs> yeah. You got to sing the whole song. Oh. Well, she didn't even get that right. No, she didn't. <laughs> Go ahead. Your turn. Nine ladies dancing, eight lords are leaping. No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, sing the damn song, okay? You can't just recite it. No, I would do it on the 12th day. Go ahead. The whole thing you don't want to hear me say. We're good. Into the microphone. What's so hard? On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12... Uh, Drummers drumming. Drummers drumming, yeah. I only don't help that. her. No, I gave her that. That was it. Okay. That's it. Uh, uh, wait. I was up 10. Wait. Nine ladies dancing, love. eight swans... Seven swans are swimming, six... What about eight? You can't eight? skip four what days! There's 12 days in Christmas! You can't... Why don't you just jump forward to five golden rings? <laughs> All three of them are out. All three of them. Get it, Vicky. Finish it for her. It's 11 pipers piping, Sing 10 lords are leaving, nine ladies dancing, eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five golden rings. Four, Four calling birds, birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> All right, that was, that was arguably difficult. We can get that because we sing that song every year with our children. We do. I will say that my kids... We sing that. We, we, right. we, we have our kids take these, these um, quizzes before we, we come up here to see like, the difficulty level. <laughs> But um, they, they could sing it, no problem. All right. Now, this next one, if they get the next one wrong, there's shame all around. Yeah. One of you must say the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, uh, go uh, ahead. Desiree. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for most. Yeah! Good job, Desiree. That's it. That's it. Very nice. And I gotta tell you, step up, step close to the microphone. Yes. That was a very good job. Are you a teacher? No, not at all. Okay, because that was very teacher-like. You really jammed it out there. Okay, Vicky, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Who was the president at the beginning of the Iranian hostage crisis? Donna. Jimmy Carter. Very, very good. good, Donna. Donna, have you seen how the other contestants like to answer with a little enthusiasm <laughs> and how you, every time you answer, someone's calling a coroner? How am I going right. to get excited about Carter? Huh? Uh, how are you going to get excited about Carter? <laughs> That's true, Donna. Okay, here we go. What was Muhammad Ali's given name at birth? Desiree. Cassius Clay. Oh Nicely my God, done. Good job. <laughs> What's the score right now, Mark? What's the score? <laughs> okay, so I, I wonder if one of you are going to get this. What was the miracle on ice? Donna? That was when we won the Olympics. Oh, my God. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's not the answer. Yes, it no, is. No, not when we were in the Olympics. Uh, that no, totally that's totally not when our hockey won. team won the Olympics. Wrong. That is wrong. That is not, right? Yeah, not the right answer. Anybody else? No. Wait, wasn't it when um, Tan, uh, Nancy, what's her name? Played now, I thought it was Disney on Ice, yeah. to be no, honest with you. Kerrigan and with Tanya Harding, Harding? no. Yeah. No, that mm -hmm. wasn't it? No, that wasn't it. Vicki, not only are you coaching them through, you're coaching them to the wrong answer. Donna, you were close, but it's wrong. You have a guess? U.S. Olympic team. So, talk to the microphone. U.S. Olympic team won some event. <laughs> <laughs> well, <America>. certainly. <laughs> won the gold. Certainly it's exciting, huh? We won the gold. That is not the miracle on ice. The miracle on ice is when the U.S. team beat the Soviet Union in the medal round, but not the gold medal. And so all three of you are wrong. No okay. points awarded. You were so close, but thanks for trying. Go ahead, Vicky. What's up? No, it's your turn. Huh? It's my turn? It's my all right. This is a very important one, okay? This is a, this is a tricky question. Mm -hmm. What do you get when you boil water? 
Desiree. Boiled water. Boiled water. <laughs> oh, hold on. Steam. Very good. Yay. I got one. Yeah. That's hard. Our daughter who goes did, to the University of Michigan said pasta. Did Ginger get one? Yeah, Ginger got one. I Ginger. Steam. So exciting. Our eight-year-old got that one. All right, Vic, uh, go. <laughs> I knew I liked her. Okay. What is the last name of the famous flying brothers Wilbur and Orville? Donna. They're the Wright brothers. Very good. Very good. Did I have enthusiasm this time? This next yeah. one, next one, much harder, much harder. What late day 20th century human rights activist wrote the autobiography of Malcolm X? Malcolm X. God damn, I hate Are Donna. You're too smart, Donna. It's no fun with you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, she's just not fun. As a contestant, <laughs> oh, even if she wins, I'm not giving her a hotel room. She's she will ruin well it. Read. She will wish she'll go to the hotel room and she'll read up on stuff. It's terrible. Oh, it's Is that your husband right there? Oh my God, throw all your Viagra away. All right. <laughs> it's, a, it's the most boring contestant ever. She's got every answer. She's shitty when she gives them. I've never pulled for someone to lose so much. All right, here we go. All right, it's my turn. Name the living ex-presidents. Desiree. So we have. Uh, to the microphone. Okay, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, Clinton, uh, George Bush, the younger one, uh, and Barack Obama. Very, Very good. good. good job, and I Desiree. find it fascinating that the only woman of color stumbled on the only president of color. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that last guy? Who is it? Well, I was looking to see if <laughs> I can't even, I can't wrap my mind around it. I would have pegged her for going Barack Obama first and everybody else. She stumbled on the, yeah, good for you. All right. Who discovered electricity? Somebody else. Who? She said Bill Clinton. She said Bill Clinton. Hey, 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 you're not an official. Sit there and shut the hell up. Who the hell made him a judge? This guy's in the audience. <laughs> okay, what's the score, Mark? Five, three, one. Five, three? I thought it was five, four. No, there's no way she, she's answered more than three questions, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, her, her husband's videotaping. Let's look, go to the Look what's tape. happening. Look what's happening. Okay, here's a white guy keeping the black woman down. It's bullshit. <laughs> we need it's, it's bullshit. Answers. I see it. We all see it. I'm the only one willing to say something because I'm woke. <laughs> We need an audit. Barack, Barack. Me? Okay. Who discovered electricity? Donna. On. You better spice this up or I'll take it away. <laughs> Nikolai. Benjamin Franklin. Oh my God! Can you read anymore? I hate her. <laughs> She's so boring. You know what? This show is so much fun when Donald's not playing. It's so. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I I am dead serious. I, this woman could ruin a lottery win. All right. What is the name of Han Solo's ship? Desiree. The Millennium Falcon. All right, Desiree. Oh. All right, now what is it? Six, four, one. one. All right. All right, All right on, now, I, I, now, Donna, get ready. You're going to get this one. This is an easy one. This is a layup, Donna. Try and get excited about the answer. What is a group of lions called? Oh, a pride. Bang! Nice. <laughs> Who was the very first white lion? The very first white lion. That was one of the questions. Simba, Simba, the um, white lion. You don't know that? No. That was a cartoon. No one else remembers Simba. Thank you, sir. Now I know how old I am. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay. Whose motto is neither snow nor rain nor heat nor a gloom of night? Whose hand was up first? Desiree. Desiree. Uh, the, the mail carrier. The yes, mail right. Carrier. The mail carrier. Now, Mark, what's the score now? Six, six, one. Okay. I'm number, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how many more questions? I have two. Huh? I have two. You have two? Mm -hmm. I see them. Uh, all right, what's the second one? Oh, that's a great one. We end on that one. All right, okay. so uh, you do yours, and I'll do mine, and then go ahead. Okay. 
On the TV show Cheers, who's the mailman? Donna. Cliff Claiborne. <laughs> wow, you said it just like Cliff. <laughs> I seriously, I hope the hotel burned down. <laughs> <laughs> what type of fish is Nemo? Desiree. He is a clownfish. Oh Very my God, nice. we are a tied ball game here. Oh, it's exciting. This next question, I predict they will not get. I feel like, Ginger, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I walk around and talk to people. All day. You walk around and talk to people. I feel like I just got to find you a softball question so you can answer one more. No, we're good. Cause you you need a tiebreaker. I'm good. Okay. Right. Ginger, you're yeah. performing at a very high level. I you're performing that. at what I call gym teacher level. All right, now. I used to be one. Oh, she used to be one. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Gym teacher during a pandemic. Very good. All right. Vicki, uh, I think you're the last question. Yeah, keep going. I, no, I don't have any more. I don't think I have any more. Okay. All right. This next one I love. See, go ahead. Knock it out. Okay. Name the Ten Commandments of the Bible. <laughs> Oh, this Desiree. is for all the marbles. Wait, wait, before you do it, before you do it, if you name them in order. No, 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 no. We don't have to. I'm name. adding. Oh. You don't have to. All right, you have to do them in order. All right, here we go. And Mark, would this be for the win? Yes. Oh, yeah. wow, it was a big. Donna, you're getting screwed. Go ahead, Desiree. Who, who, who had the hand up first? Desiree. Get it, Desiree. Let's go for it. First of all, look, look how happy Desiree's husband is. Okay. So happy. There's a man that's gonna yeah, look at okay. He's now gonna that be guy, happy in that hotel room. First of all, he thinks he's gonna get laid. That's number yeah, one. Yeah. All right. Secondly, he's gonna he's gonna just knock it out of the park at salt. Yeah. And then he's gonna come here and eat all our desserts. That man is happy. <laughs> all right. Let's go, Desiree. Let's knock it out. Okay. Oh boy. Um. Okay. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> that's an easy one. That's an easy to the one. microphone. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Give me a minute. It don't turn. Take your time. <laughs> no, you can't no follow rest. all of them. It's a lot of rules. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, um, <laughs> okay, no, y'all, wait, wait. Give me a second. <laughs> Y'all gonna see smoke in a minute because it's like <laughs> trying to get the gears to turn. Um, sorry. Stop. Three. It's Three gone. commandments. It's okay. Gone. Hey, sir, you're going to hell. I don't know how to explain it. You don't know the rules. You can't follow the rules. You're going to hell. Okay. This woman's coveting all kinds yeah. of things. Donna, you have it? Yeah, she's got it. I'm the Lord thy God. There shall not be false gods before me. Shall not cover the neighbor's wife, shall not cover the neighbor's goods, shall not kill, shall not lie. Remember, keep holy the Sabbath. Um, honor the mother and Wait, father. did you say thou shalt not lie? Yeah. Yes, you did. That is That's right. not a... Yes, that, it is. How is that a command? It is. Keep going. Holy shit, I'm going to hell too. Her rhythm. <laughs> keep you going. Don't be lonely, babe. Uh, shall not commit adultery. Wait, that's that too? <laughs> Sorry. Stop. You're messing her up. No gods before me, shall not covet the neighbor's wife, covet the neighbor's goods, um, bear false witness, which is the lie, mm -hmm. um, keep holy the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. What am I in six? That was Don't help her. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, murder, mm -hmm. shall not kill. Adultery. We did, all right, we did. That's twice an adultery, Donna. What's on your mind? <laughs> okay, okay. We won't interrupt you. Don't interrupt her. Okay. okay. No gods before me. Mm -hmm. Bear false witness. Shall not murder. Keep holy the Into the microphone. Keep holy the Sabbath. Honor the mother and father. Not covet the neighbor's wife. Not covet the neighbor's goods. Oh. See, I know I um, you heard the same. She has no, I know, but she has said a combination of all of them, just not in order. No, no, no. You don't be in order. She's only at she six. She has. No, I've said seven now. That's She's at six. No, no, no. No, no, she, no, but I've said them all. But she has said them all at different times. No, she hasn't. I can think yes, of one she, she has. hasn't said. Yes, I have. Huh? No. Did she get them all? No. no. Did she get them all? No. Yes. Right? 
She missed one. Heathen. <laughs> Thou shalt not go maskless at Target. <laughs> okay, what do you got? Did she, let me see the list. Let me see the list. I need help with the list. Fair, fair All right, let me see. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, God's before me. Mm-hmm. Hmm? God's before me. Shall not lie. Shall not steal. No, she missed this one right here. She totally missed that one. No, she said that she twice. Said that? She said that twice. I just don't want to give her the room, Vic. <laughs> She, just, she got them all? She got them all. You just kept interrupting. God damn it. She got them all. Now, actually, you're going to get hit with lightning that I actually got the commandments, right? Okay, there is one question we missed. This could tie it up for you. Okay. This is the big one. This, we missed that question. It's the last question. Oh. oh you hate yeah. that question. I do hate all right. that question. The first 10 articles of the Constitution are commonly referred to as... Oh my God! Ginger, oh, ginger Hold on, Ginger woke up. Get yeah, Ginger. The amendments. Now did I get the wrong thing? No. no. Oh, sorry. Donna. The Bill of Rights. All yeah, right, Donna, Donna we're got it. <laughs> Hey, listen, it's very exciting. Donna, you won a hotel and you won dinner at Salt and a night here. Uh, Desiree, you won a hundred dollar gift card here, all right? And the hotel rooms are so cheap, you can get all that shit for a hundred bucks. And, yeah. and Ginger, seriously, you won not just a fifty dollar gift card, we're also giving you a fifth grade book. Now, <laughs> you guys are out of fun that pop quiz, crap for our contestants. Oh, man. Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds, one more time, everybody. Give a big round of applause. show left. Vicki, I got to tell you, so I love doing the game show, Yeah. but didn't Donna, she was just boring, right? She's too well read. And, and we've She's known her for well a while. Read. She's a fun human being, and she does a lot of great charity work, right? Donna does a lot of charity work for the Boy Scouts yes, of America, does. right? So does Ginger. And today, what did you do today? Tell me what you did today. You know what, Donna? Hang on. You're starting to bore people again. What Donna did today is she collected a bunch of food and they distributed it to hungry people, right? You see how easy it is to say? No, she gave out gift cards to families with children today. All right. She somehow made it. Just, no, one, no one cares. They gave out gift cards to families in need. Is that right? Thank you very much, Donna. Great work you did. And thank you for playing. And thank you for letting me pick on you. I, I, I really thought you would be fun. That's why we brought you two up. Desiree, I was pulling for you. And, uh, you know, you were a lot of fun. You look how disappointed he is. Uh, <laughs> you have a lot of children at home? No. No, they're all grown. No children? No. Not at home. Oh, they're all adults? Yeah. Okay, so you don't need a hotel room. You can get a home game. Yeah. All right, now. <laughs> We have a great stand-up comedy here tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, we are We are so do. excited. So here's what's going to happen now for the rest of the night. Two great comics come up, one after another. After that, the band's going to play. You guys are a great audience. Are you nice and warm, by the way? Yeah. Everyone's nice cozy. And warm. warm and safe. Our first comic has been seen on ABC. He wrote the best seller, Rice Krispies with ketchup. First time here at the club. Please welcome our friend, Kirk Smith, everybody. How you guys doing? Good. Good to be here in this tent. Yeah, it's good. No, it's good. I look like a failed youth pastor. So I'm right at home. It's like a revival in this little, uh, this little tent. This little tent. Yeah, this is what I look like. A little weird, huh? A little bit like an off-duty cop. I, uh, the weird thing about looking like uh, Hitler's wet dream is uh, I actually grew up in Ecuador and El Salvador. 
It's a little weird for me because my name is Kirk Smith. It's the whitest name ever. New York, I live in the Bronx, East Bronx. Uh, when I moved to the Bronx, my buddy was like, uh, you're moving to the Bronx? You're not scared to live in the Bronx? And then I had to explain. I was like, no, man. I, I grew up in the 80s in El Salvador, which is like growing up now in El Salvador. And then, uh, then we moved to Ecuador. Ecuador is a little country. I don't meet a lot of people from Ecuador. Every once in a while, I'll meet somebody who's like third generation from Ecuador, and then they won't believe me that I'm from Ecuador because I look like a Bible salesman. So they'll be like, you're from Ecuador? Which part? And then I'll tell them the truth. La ciudad, Guayaquil. El vecindario Ordesa, pero también vivimos en chance. La Garzota, no sé si lo ubicas. And then they'll say, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Yo, last year, U.S. women won the World Cup again. Third time in a row. It's great. Listen, it's great. You have to celebrate it. By comparison, U.S. men did not even qualify for the tournament. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. You know who qualified? Mexico. They have 100 million Mexicans. The U.S. did not qualify. We have 100 million Mexicans. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. The president's like, some of these Mexicans are rapists and murderers. I'm like, some of them play defense. I, uh, that's as political as I get, guys. <laughs> that's it. Soccer jokes. That's what I like. I know it's weird that I like soccer because I look like a failed high school quarterback. I've, uh, I've got two kids. Uh, I'm not aging correctly. Uh, it's hard to believe, but my kids are 23 and 24. I know. I got married when I was 10. <laughs> my daughter's 24, and, uh, and she wants to get married. And, uh, and this guy doesn't want to ask permission. You got to ask. This, this generation of men, like, very brave online. You know what I mean? Like, the comments on YouTube, very brave. In person, not as much. You have to ask, buddy. Listen, you want to marry my daughter, you have to ask. I'm old school. You have to come over to my house, knock on my door, and fight me. <laughs> and he doesn't have a dad. Nobody has a dad anymore. It's like, it was me to be his dad because I look like a 1950s dad. I'm like, I don't want to be your dad, bro. Fine. I'm your dad and I'm her dad. Stop dating your sister. He's one of these guys that walks around like this. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like he's carrying invisible luggage. Like, look at that guy. He's got baggage, but it's on the inside. I do miss the gyms. I miss the gyms. You miss the gyms, sir? It's nice, right? The thing I miss most about the gym, the old men of the gym, so brave. So brave. Walk around the locker room, no towels. No towels. Drying off their little bodies, those hand dryers. Balls slapping together so hard it sounds like an applause break. And what do they do? Lock eyes, straight into conversation. Government's coming for our guns. Who came for the towels? <laughs> I like you guys. You guys laughed just enough for me to continue. <laughs> but not enough for me to feel good about myself. <laughs> it's the perfect amount. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I'm, uh, I'm widowed. I was, I was married for a long time. I was married 17 years, and now I'm starting over again. So I, a lot's changed since I've been out of the game. And uh, I will tell you this, if you're in a terrible relationship, just stay in it. There's nothing out there. <laughs> That's sad laughter. That's my favorite. <laughs> I've dated two diabetics, so clearly I have a type. <laughs> type one, type one. They love a sugar daddy. They love a sugar daddy. Some of these jokes are going to get in the ride home, guys. <laughs> or maybe not at all. I'm not positive. <laughs> I did date a second grade teacher. That was very nice. They're very positive. You know what I mean? It's great for your ego. Yeah, we were hanging out. I parallel parked. I kind of screwed it up. And she was like, Kirk, that was terrific. Your mom would be so proud. We're making out. She gives me those gold stars. I was hanging out with my buddy. He's like, you have a watermelon sticker on your forehead. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was a good boy earlier. 
I forgot. I forgot. Uh, dated a lawyer. Hard to date a lawyer. Any lawyers in here? Any lawyers? Any attorneys in here? Nobody, nobody, no. I, I just, what's that? You're a lawyer? Yes? What kind of law do you practice, ma'am? I don't practice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're still married. I like it. That's great. It's hard because, like, lawyers, basically you argue for a living, right? But you're a woman. You're also just better at arguing than I am. I could not win an argument. Let me give you an example. One time, she forgot to pick me up from the airport. I was upset. We talked about it, and I apologized. <laughs> I dated a nurse for a minute, mostly because I don't have health insurance. You're a nurse? You're a nurse? Somebody, somebody just cheered? you nurse? That's a hard job. ER? What do you do? Both You're both nurses. You found each other. Perfect. That's great. Yeah, clap it up. So, and you like feet? Is that the rest of that? Oh, you can't work. I'm a nurse, you can tell, because I'm a size seven. Okay. That's a tough job. You can't complain about your day to a nurse. Yeah. It was back in February, I auditioned for this movie. I didn't get it. I was upset. I started to tell her. She interrupted me. She's like, ah, ah, ah. you had a hard day at work? Really? Today at work? Does somebody take a crap on you and then die? I had to make that joke clean. That's as clean as I can make that dead joke, sir. <laughs> this, your, this is your, this has to be your daughter, I hope, right? Okay, there we go. Good, good. I have the same problem. Everywhere I go, somebody thinks my daughter's my girlfriend. I know. And it's weird, you know, it's embarrassing. Because she's not really my type. <laughs> oh, <man. It's> embarrassing. <laughs> we were in a restaurant once, and she goes in first. And the waiter's like, can I see you and your boyfriend? And without missing a beat, she like turns and looks at me and goes, I could do better. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> I don't know. She's thinking about having kids. And I was telling her straight up, I'm like, listen, honey, I'm telling you from experience, you should wait a little bit. Just wait a little bit. And she's like, what should I wait for? Should I wait till I have more money? I was like, no. Wait till I'm not single. Listen, I can't be single and a grandpa and on Tinder. You guys know what I mean, a gilf? Some girl swipes right on me and she's like, how you doing, daddy? I have to tell her, well, technically, I prefer pop pop. She's like, I'm looking for a sugar daddy. And I'm like, here we go again. Well, you're a diabetic? Type one, get over here. I've got a drawer full of Werther's Originals. <laughs> that lady really likes hard candy jokes. I haven't made you guys laugh yet, but I'm gonna come tickle you in a second. <laughs> Are you having a good time, ma'am? Good. You speak English, that's good. You just don't like the jokes. Okay, good, as long as we're clear. <laughs> I feel a little bit like this is like doing comedy in front of my dad, like the same look of disappointment. <laughs> Just teasing. You guys are great. I, uh, what are we talking about? Dating, yes. She's like, I should never come out in public with my dad. Are you studying? What are you doing? School? Work? School? Nice. You have a lot of kids, sir? How many kids do you have? Two. Two. So this is your favorite one. And then there's a backup kid at home for organs. That's great. <laughs> That's great. I, <laughs> I hit home. Somebody in the back was like, we do have a favorite one. Everybody likes Tommy. What are we talking about? Dating. That's right. I got distracted. I got distracted. Uh, this pandemic's got me like all over the place. I did some shows last week down in Florida. It's the only place that's ignoring this thing. And... Uh, <laughs> Somebody saw my out of license, uh, my out of plates, my out of state plates, excuse me. And then this old lady's like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like it, you're not gonna fit in. Like, lady, you don't think I'm gonna fit in in Florida? I speak English, I speak Spanish, I'm older than I look, and I'm a terrible Christian? <laughs> lady, I am Florida. <laughs> Miami Beach, you ever been down there, young man? You ever been down there? Yes. Did you like it? What do you think? Is this okay with your family? I don't know. Reminding one of my ex-girlfriends that it's like so hot, but so dumb. 
I don't know. There's people in line, five people in line. This is a true story. This is his show. All wear masks. All, one guy lights up a joint. They all take off their masks, share the joint. I'm like, okay. Which is a little bit like wearing a motorcycle helmet all day until you get to your motorcycle. I'm like, well, I'm done with this. Just take it off. I don't know. I don't know. It was fun. It was fun. Shows are good, I guess. Good to work. I, uh, before that, my plates are still California. I did five years in purgatory out in California. It's a dumpster. Don't go. There's no parking. Here's the thing about L.A., right? There's no public transportation, so you have to drive. But there's nowhere to park. Sometimes I would park eight blocks from my apartment. I bought a Razor push scooter. <laughs> to keep in the trunk of my car, to go the eight blocks from my car to my apartment. I don't know if my neighbors even knew that I had a car. They would just see me leave on the morning a scooter, come back on a scooter. Where's this guy going? I don't know, he said he had a date and he got his little scooter and just pushed away <laughs> like he's five. My buddy's like, what happens if you meet a girl? What happens if you bring a lady over to your place? I'm like, that's a good point. I bought a second scooter. <laughs> you don't have to social distance yourself from your laughs, people. We can do this. <laughs> the next comic you have coming is very funny. Be nice. Be supportive. They're recording this for posterity. Your job is when there's a pause, you laugh. That's it. That's all I do. Easy, easy. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. It's been great. I, uh, ooh, we'll do a little geography joke. I told you I grew up in Ecuador, yeah. Here's the difference between L.A. and Ecuador. In L.A., I had a meeting once with an agent who was like, uh, hey, you have a good look. You could totally play a doctor. In Ecuador, I could just be a doctor. <laughs> you guys have been great. My name is Kirk Smith. Have a great night, guys. Give it up for your host. Clap your hands for Kirk Smith, everybody. Put them together. So, uh, so I got to tell you, you're, you're, you're a great audience. And I, I'm going to ask you a couple quick favors. You can do it right now. Go on your phone and follow on Instagram. That's important. Are you on Instagram? All right. You're not on Instagram, right? No, you're way too old. You're on Instagram? Of course. How old are you? 60? 66? What are you doing on Instagram? Are you on the TikTok, sir? Oh, the TikTok is the best, sir. The dances on the... Do you like the TikTok? I love TikTok. People getting hurt. It makes me very happy. Anyway, uh, so go on Instagram right now and follow, please, Stress Factory. Follow Vinny underscore brand. We have more show for you. You guys ready for your next comedian? Let me hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what. Uh, we, we've been friends for a long time, this next guy and I. And uh, we've worked all over the city together. I have never seen this guy not kill or destroy. He was a finalist on Last Comic Standing. You know him from all the hot podcasts, Sirius Satellite Radio. Please welcome our friend Mike Gaffney, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. More, more for me. That was a long time to get up here. Come on. Thank you. This is strange, man. You got to put your own mic. It's like, what am I, tech? I can... Barely going to do this 25 minutes. I got to do microphones now. Can, can I just come up here and talk? I mean, with this, what, 28 people in a tent? What are we doing? What the hell happened? This used to be a thing that everybody wanted to do. Like, I want to be a comedian. Now it's like, I want to... There's heat lamps, there's an old guy. There's like, what are we doing? What's happening? It's not supposed to be an old guy. A comedy is supposed to be in bed. It's what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not going to complain. I'm alive. That's all I can say. But what the hell is up? Okay? The mask, I, I, I had the mask on the whole time. It squishes my nose. I don't like the way that feels. But what I do like, I wear one of those ones you pull up, like all the way down. Like It's like covers your whole face. I love it because... It not only cover because I'm I'm a I'm really good looking, like up this far. 
Like my eyes, what? What are you talking about, what? You don't fall in love with that? It's all this that really is not good. So this thing goes all the way up and it covers everything. So like, it gives me a jawline. It's like spanks from my face. I love it. When you take me home, it's going to be like, bam, plop. Like, what the hell was that? That was under that mask? My thing is I like to smile a lot. Like, when I go into a store, like, I'm always, I'm very, like, pleasant. I try, you're going to, in a minute, you're going to be like, I don't think you're pleasant. But I am, okay? But I like to always smile at people when I see, especially, like, an old lady. I'm always like, what's going on, old lady? I see you. You know what I mean? That's how I am. I'm very welcome. Like, good to see you, old person. Way to be alive. But now, like, you can't see the smile, so all you see is my weird eyes coming at you. So it's just like, what's up? And like, is he going to murder us? Why is his eyes moving? But under the mask, I'm, I'm smirking. I'm, I'm giving you a little, my lips poke out. You can't see it. You know what's happened during this pandemic? I've become, yeah, everybody, yeah. You know, like, wherever you live in your town, there's always, like, one town that's got, like, a weird old dude that like just wanders and directs traffic. You ever got that crazy guy, like Crazy Charlie? He's just out in the street going, go ahead. You're like, I was going anyway, Charlie. Thank you. No one's asked you to do this. Why are you out here? That's what's happened to me during this pandemic, but I do that when I'm at the supermarket and you go up the wrong, if the arrow's pointing and you walk up that way, I snap. I'm always like, you want pasta? You got to go up, bacon goods, and then down pasta. That's the way it is. Sometimes I don't vocalize it. I just make you feel stupid. What I do is I'll walk up the aisle, and if you're coming down the wrong way, I'll just be like, oh, my God, did I mess up? Oh, oh, it wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> you can walk away with your arrogance, but you're a jerk. I do that all day in Acme. They didn't ask me to do it. I do it. One good thing about this whole pandemic, the silver lining, we got to find one, is that no one can complain to you anymore because we're all going through the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, when you're, like, back before the pandemic, you run into somebody, like, what's up, Charlie? He's like, eh. <sighs> Thought my, my job's messed up. Like, now, it's like, no one can say nothing. It's like, it's like, what's going on? I'm not working. Me neither. Shut your face. <laughs> and then my kids are always home. Mine, too. Shut your face. My wife is there all the time. Yeah, mine, too. Shut your face. What are we doing? What's, what's happening out there? Do you hear that? What are we Construction, ring, it's Sunday, go to bed. What are we doing, building houses? Or are we building another tent to do another show after this? <laughs> You're in tent number seven, it's down the block. <laughs> tent seven's down on church, all the way down. You'll go, you'll see, there's nine people in that one. It's a good one, we have 27 heaters and eight people. <laughs> we want everyone to have their own individual heater, if we can do that, that'd be awesome. Another thing, some dude eats a tiger, I mean, eats a, eats a bat, and now everyone in the United States is an is a expert in tiger rescues. I didn't even know we had that many tigers in this country. First off, let me say something. If you don't have teeth, you don't get a tiger. That should be a rule. <laughs> if you're missing teeth, you don't get to own a tiger. I'm not making it. I got two missing teeth back here. I don't get one. I'm not judging you, but if you don't have teeth in the front of your face, what, you can't keep your teeth. You're going to keep a tiger? Do you see the other show that's on Netflix? It's called The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Have you seen that? The Wonderful. They use the word wonderful very loosely in this. <laughs> Have you seen it? It's just like white trash dudes from West Virginia selling drugs. Oh, it's all, here's the thing. It's like, you ever watch the show Cops and you always wanted to know what was happening before the, the cameras came? This is what was happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like we see, like on their show, we could see the cops cameras coming to their show. That's, that's what's going on. I um, finally got to see my doctor. Well, let me tell you. First off, we can all agree, 2020, whatever, it's like God is just saying, you people suck. <laughs> right? Because every year something happens. Every few months before 2020, something would happen, and we would get days for a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, and then go right back to being jerks. Right? God tried. He kept trying to do stuff, and we kept going, taking it, and being right back to being a jerk. And God's like, all right, we're going to need to have to do a whole year of, of shit. Just shake the hell. Like, getting ba like shaking baby syndrome is what's happening to us. It's just out there, son of a bitch. That's what's happening right now. God's like, son of a bitch. 
get it together. <laughs> but before this, I, had, I started doing um, cruises. I wanted to do cruises my whole career. I wanted to do, perform on cruises. It's just a great, it's a great, it's great money, but it's also, you know, since you're out there on the, you know, the ocean, just chilling. And I started, and then this hit, because that's what God does to me. I was enjoying life in the 90s. He gave me two kids. Ruined that. And then uh, I got cruises. He was like, yeah, let's hit a pandemic out in the ocean. Keep him home with those two kids he hates. <laughs> but I started doing cruises, and I didn't, I've been wanting to do it for so long. And I got a call. I'm going to tell you about this cruise, that my very first cruise I ever went and, and performed on. So I got a phone call. 18 hours. I had to be in western Mexico within 18 hours to be on my first cruise. And I have no idea what to expect. I've never done it before. Everybody who's done cruises or on a cruise, I couldn't get in touch with anybody. So I was just had to figure it out. So I get there. I pack everything I own. I'm going to go out for 10 days. I get to the ship. And I see a lot of, there's a lot of men. So I go to sleep. So when you get to the ship, you got to call your contact person. I get there and I call the guy. And he's like, you're kind of on vacation for the next five days. This ship has been chartered by a private organization. They bring their own entertainers. You're just here in case something happens, but you're basically on vacation for five days, and then the you know other passengers will come on in five days, and then you'll start to do your act. Perfect. Cool. So I went to sleep. Felt the boat moving around 9 o'clock at night. I went to get some food. I go upstairs to get food, and it's all men. Like all men. I don't know if you understand what I mean by all men. Does it feel like you're getting it? 700 to 900 men. Okay? So I go to the phone real quick. I'm like, hey, hey, remember me? I'm the command. What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, are all the women sleeping? It's what's happening. And he said, no, this has been chartered by a gay men's organization. That's why you kind of got to lay low. Basically telling me to act gay for five days because I'm not even supposed to be on the ship to begin with. Which I don't care. I'm not homophobic. I don't care. I'm not one of those guys. Yo, you want to be gay? Be gay, bro. I don't care. Be gay, bro. All right? Be gay, bro. Just don't flirt with me, all right, bro? Like, women don't flirt with you. What the hell are you talking about? No one wants you. So I don't really care what you're doing. But it was like so much. Guy, there was a lot of like butts out. Everybody's butt was it. Like a lot, of, a lot of guys' asses were out. Is what I'm saying? And like there was glitter. A lot of glitter. And the, like butts out. Like a lot of butts. But it's like 10 o'clock at night. You guys your butts got to be out. It's 10, I don't know how it works. And guys, another guy's like wearing a unicorn hat, like a, like a halo with a unicorn, the whole time. For five days, he never took it off. He had wings, glitter, ass out, unicorn. <laughs> but I thought, like, this guy can't be that in regular society. He can't go to work, ass out, unicorn. So he's got to do it here, like let his unicorn fly. He's on a ship, let your unicorn fly, be a free unicorn. So I'm all right with it. It's what it is, what it is. So I go to sleep, I wake up the next morning for breakfast, I go to the buffet, and everyone's ass is still out. I'm like, wait, for, you need your ass out at the egg station? You can't put your ass away for breakfast? I don't want to, it's, it's breakfast. I don't need to see your ass at the omelet station. I was uh, hanging out in the same spot, drinking coffee. Every day I was in the same spot, hung out, writing and drinking coffee. And this one couple would always see me and sit down and talk to me. And he was very comfortable, and he just kept, every time he would talk to me, he would put his hand like this, and he would go, girl, that's what he would say to me. He'd be like, girl, girl. And at first, I was like, Stop, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy, God damn it. <laughs> but after like the fifth day, I was like, girl, you want to get eggs? Get your ass out, man, let's go get some eggs. I realize that you're born gay, but I think some people can flip. I'll be honest with you. I think the only reason I'm straight is so all my friends are straight. I think if my friends were gay, I would be gay because I'm a follower. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, I'm doing. I'm like, let's go. Whip, whip, whip. Does everyone get a unicorn hat? This <laughs> so one guy was like, listen, have you ever? He was really sweet. He was so sweet. He was a very good looking man. He had beautiful eyes. He was so sweet. And he was like, have you ever been to Santa Monica? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, you have to go to Santa Monica. You have to go to Santa Monica. And I was like, are you asking me to move in with you? Because I'm coming. I'm going to be there. I love you too. 
He said to me, when you come to Santa Monica, there's a spot they close off a couple of streets, and there's shops, and that's what he goes, there's shops, and they do arts and crafts. And he said arts and crafts, and I put my hand, it was like, what, arts and crafts? And then I had an out-of-body experience, and my, myself out here was like, stop it! Get your hand off your chest, Michael! You don't care about arts and crafts? Walk away from this man. Finally, we, uh, we dock in L.A., and they all get off, and then it was like their regular cruise ship. It was no longer chartered. All the regular passengers got on, and we were going from L.A. to Hawaii. So it was like a six days on the, on the ocean, and it was mostly older people because it's a long time to be on the ocean. Young people can't do that. It was a lot of, like, 2,000 older people. It sucked. They were boring. There was no parties. Everyone's ass was covered. I'm like, how do I know it's breakfast if your ass ain't out? How am I supposed to know? But I do, I do miss it. I'll be honest with you. They were, they were awesome. That, that, that crew was awesome. Man. This, I'm telling you, bro, there was a party, bro. They had a white party, and they all dressed in like, oh, my God. I wish I had, I didn't want to take pictures. I didn't want to, like, you know, be disrespectful. But they had all these costumes on. There was, like, six buff dudes. They had, like, thigh-high white boots on. They were huge. And they all had light-up mohawks. Their, their mohawks lit up. And they just walked around like, it was so awesome. And I wanted to be with them. And they wouldn't, because I don't look like. But it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> I was trying to hang out with them. I was like, what's up? I don't have any of this, because I didn't know there was going to be a white party, or I would have brought my lighting-up mohawk. <laughs> it was fun. I miss it. I miss it. I can't wait till we go back to normal. I know, like, people are, it's very serious, and people are, I just can't wait to go back on the ship and to get away from you people. <laughs> Best thing that happened, sir, there's been happening for me, is I deleted Facebook because you people suck. <laughs> you suck the life and fun out of everything you touch. And not you people, because you're here live, but you people. You suck the life and fun out of everything I post. You're horrible human beings. You're not fun to be around. No matter what I post, you got to come in with your dumbass point of view. I hate it. You can point like, I love hot dogs, and someone's going to tell you, eh, hot dogs ain't good for you. Listen, go post on your wall that you hate hot dogs, all right? I'm not going to come on your wall and tell you how hot dogs are awesome for you, okay? I shouldn't be eating hot dogs. I don't know why I said that as a point, but... I, uh... Finally got to see my doctor when it took a dip. In the beginning, you couldn't go to a doctor unless your one of your lungs was in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to walk like that one because I think that's got COVID. <laughs> Other than that, you couldn't come. So I had hurt my knee because I'm old. And you know, you'll understand this. Here's the thing. I went to bed perfectly healthy. I woke up with a swollen knee. And then took the entire day to try to realize what in the hell did I do yesterday for that to be swollen since I don't do anything but sit and wait for shows. So I had Googled what to do, and it says you go to the store. They could go to the store and get like a wrap. So I went to CVS to get a wrap. All the boxes had like pictures of like a dude running. Another guy was playing football. One dude was slam dunking a basketball. Another guy had a hard hat and working. I'm like, I don't need my knee brace to do any of that. Uh... <laughs> I need to be able to watch television comfortably. You got a knee brace for that? <laughs> I've had two doctors my whole life. One was a, my doctor when I was a kid until I was like 22 years old was an Indian guy. And every time he diagnosed me, he would give me the same diagnosis. No matter what I went there with, it was always swollen glands. No matter what I would say, he'd be like, oh, swollen glands. I'm like, did you hear the pneumonia? My mom won't let me stay home with swollen glands, buddy. Can you figure something else out? But it was always swollen glands. I went there for a physical. He touched right here. He goes, oh, you have a swollen glands. I'm like, there's glands under your... I didn't even know there was glands under there. The last time I went to him, I was 22 years old, and I had like this knot, like right here, like weird knot in my groin. And you know when you're 22 and this is, you know, you're still using this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when this is important, right now, it's like, you know, pff, I don't even care. There could be nine knots around there. I wouldn't even care. But at 22, this was a serious you know, spot on my body. So I went to my doctor. I was like, I don't know what you got to do. Get a nurse, open a book, get a lighting. But there's something going on right down here. He goes, oh, right here? Oh, that's the swollen gland. I'm like, is that like the, the last chapter you read? <laughs> Stop going to him. Now my doctor for the last 10 years, his only, only diagnosis is you got to lose weight. That's his whole, every time you got to lose weight. I'm like, how about I punch in your throat? Say it again. <laughs> Say it again, you jerk. 
He said to me, I got to send you for an ultrasound. <laughs> How fat am I? Am I pregnant? Oh, damn gay cruise. Nah, I knew I shouldn't have gotten in a hot tub. He's like, no, it doesn't work like that. These people owed like I got pregnant in a hot tub. I don't know if you know how it works, but it doesn't work like that. So he sends me for this ultrasound. I'm so uncomfortable because I don't like to take my shirt off in front of people. And I'm hoping it's an old dude that's going to do it, but it's not. It's two young girls working the machine who probably went to school so they could see babies, not to find out what's up with the fat guy. I got to take my shirt off. I'm so uncomfortable because I'm not good. I'm like, I'm very fat. I'm white. I'm shiny. It's not comfortable with it the way this looks. I roll up like right under my boob, like I roll my shirt, and she's like, you're going to have to take your shirt off. I'm like, you need my boobs? Got to be out for this? So there I am, just laid out. You know what I look like? Do you ever go to a pizzeria and you see like the blob of dough? You know, like the big blob of dough, and you're like, I'll take a pepperoni pie. And he's like, and he pops out, and he makes a pie. That's what it looks like. Like somebody's going to come in and pop out a pie. So I'm laying there, and she takes this gel, and she just starts <laughs> loading it up. And I felt like every girlfriend I've ever been with sexually, I was like, ew, why? Why is there so much? I got it. It's so sticky. She's up 40 minutes doing this. She gets up, no words spoken. She just gets up, gets a towel, throws it on my stomach and walks out. I'm like, oh, no, we don't cuddle in this hospital? <laughs> so I go back to my doctor. He goes, oh, your test results came back. And he goes, everything was fine, but you do have a fatty liver. <laughs> you yeah, no shit. What? <laughs> Why would I not have a fatty liver? Like, my, look at my body. Like, so you think my body is like this, but my liver is just shredded. It's beautiful. <laughs> just goes to the gym every day. It's all diesel. So you got to quit candy. He said it so cold, like no bedside manner, no like, let's get your family in here, let's talk, like nothing, just came out, got to quit candy. I'm like, how about I kick you in the balls? <laughs> you don't just say that to someone. Should my mom be here? You just told me I can never have another Reese's peanut butter cup. You don't think my mother should be here to hold me right now? <laughs> I'll just drop that news. I joined the gym in September. But I haven't been back, you know, September of, you know, 2014. But I haven't been back because of the pandemic. You can't do it because it's not me, man. The pandemic. I would be there right now, but they don't let me. I do need to, here's what I would like to do. I would like to be able to sit on the floor. I would like to be able to sit down and have like a pic. I cannot. I'm fat. I'm very t like tight. I'm not flexible, so I can't get down. Like, I would, like if you came upon me in the, in, in the park and you, it looks like I'm having a picnic, you wouldn't know if I was having a picnic. It looked like I fell and I'm trying to get up. <laughs> I just look so uncomfortable. Everything's like stretched out. It's like, oh my God, sir, are you okay? Yeah, no, I meant to be down here. It doesn't look like you meant to be down there. My doctor's like, well, don't you have any goals? I'm like, yeah, I'd like to be able to tie my shoelace but without a side bow. I don't want like a, like a knot on the side over right here. You know what I mean? Like a side bow? I want like a, in the middle of the shoe. Skinny people have no idea what I'm talking about. Skinny people, you just go down and tie your shoelace. We can't get down there. This is in the way. You got to bring your foot to you, and then you only got about five seconds before you pass out. So you got to bang out that knot, and it's usually on the side. You take a minute, catch your breath, do it again. Guys, all right. I'm gonna tell you real quick. It looks like uh, I'm gonna be done. Maybe I don't know how it works. It's a tent. It's weird. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. It's the holidays. My children are older now. My kids are in their 20s, so it's like different. I liked when they were younger. Is this your your daughter, right? When they were how old are you? 16. So you all right? You want to earmuffs for a sec? <laughs> oh, Santa Claus isn't real. Sorry. Is that the old guy? <laughs> How you made it this far? What? But I liked when Santa Claus was real for my kids. It was fun because, you know, it was that added excitement for Santa, like Christmas. Now it's just, now my son just comes to me. He's like, yo, Dad, you want to give me 500 for Christmas? I'm like, it's June. 
He's like, yeah, you give me 250 now, then we'll like square up in December. S- square up? What are you, with my bookie? Get the hell out of my room. My mom wanted me to continually believe in Santa Claus. That was her whole life mission was for me to keep believing in Santa Claus. And it's because she knew. She knew that if I stopped believing in Santa Claus, that's when you stop getting all the cool, cool gifts. And you start getting, you know what I mean? Like Santa Claus only brings cool gifts to people who believe. Now you're going to get all the boring adult gifts like socks. So I'm saying if you still believe in them, hold on to it as long as you can. Unless, of course, you need socks. Then, you know. My son, my kids, when they were younger, they were like four and five, they, uh, for six months, all my son wanted was a baton for Christmas. That's a guitar for you. Baton. I want a baton. Dad, you think so, Santa Claus? That's how he used to talk. I love when he talked like that. I didn't want to correct him. You ever have little kids, you don't want to correct them when they say wrong words and make them say it in front of everybody? My daughter used to say, Dad, can I put the, the, the juice out of the refrigerator? And I'm like, where is it? It's in the refrigerator. <laughs> Tell everybody. It's in the refrigerator! That's my girl. That's my girl. Well, my son wanted a baton for Christmas, so I, that's all he wanted. Christmas morning, I'm a single father. I've been raising them by myself since they're babies. So they come busting in your room. You know, they don't care. That's the one thing about it. They don't have watches. They don't have no idea. 3.30 in the morning, like, Dad, you think so Santa came? You think so Santa came? Yeah, I fell asleep like nine minutes ago. He came. <laughs> Get the hell out there. So they're tearing into their gifts. He's got a baton. Dad, my baton! So excited. My daughter got a Barbie in a box, in a Jeep. So she gets to me first to take Barbie out of the box. My son's dead. Dad, can you want my baton? He's got to give me one second, Bar- buddy. I got to get Barbie out of the box. Oh, all right. And that should be kind of quick, but Barbie has about 4,200 twisty ties. What has she done? Why is she on lockdown? Every finger needs a damn twisty tie? What, is she running around a toy store grabbing stuff at night? And you're like, no, lock her down. And they make it so tight, you can't get scissors. Right? You try to get scissors, and they twist, and you son of a bitch. You got to do it with your fingers. And you're bleeding. You're sweating. Dad, what's up, buddy? Can you own my baton? Got to give me one second, buddy. I just got to get Barbie out of the box. Oh, all right. Like, it was the first time we said this. Daddy, what's up, bud? Can you own my baton? Barbie. Box. Oh, all right. Daddy, son of a bitch. What's up? What do you need? Can you own my baton? You don't see the bitch is still in the box? The bitch is still in the box, man. Finally, I opened up a dumb baton. Three seconds, bling, blong, blong, drops it and runs off. I'm like, nah, Hendrix, get the hell back here. I want a full-blown concert. You've been busting my balls for three months. Get over here and play a concert. I almost told him there was no Santa Claus. That's how angry I was. But I don't want to ruin it because when you're broke, Santa Claus is awesome. You just blame everything on Santa. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wake up like, Dad, I wanted a bike. I know what. You wrote the letter and everything. That's messed up, man. And he ate your cookie? What an ass. That's messed up. I would have got you three bites, but you didn't write me a letter. All right, guys. You've been great. Have a good holiday. Thank you so much. Clap your hands for Mike Gaffney, everybody. So I just want you to know, uh, this is what's going to happen now. The comedy, the comedy portion. What's that? Thank you very much. I love you for that. I'm going to tell you something all right now, okay? Your night is not over if you don't want it to be. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You shouldn't go home yet because who knows when this shit's going to get shut down, all right? And I'll tell you something right now. I'm not going down quietly. I'm going to fight and have as much fun as I can. And, yeah. And I, I want you to do me a favor. Tomorrow, tomorrow on Facebook Live at Stress Factory, I will lay out for everyone how you can enjoy Christmas safely. Because immediately, right after Thanksgiving, it was like Friday morning, you're like, oh, Christmas is going to be dangerous. And it's a bunch of bullshit. You can do it safe. You can do it safe. Clap for Joe Coon and the Hungry Hound, everybody. Clap for Mike Gaffney, everybody. 
Vicky Brand, everybody! Kurt Smith, everybody! Now, the band's gonna keep playing. You can do us a favor and tip the band. I never asked for money. I asked for three things. Number one, share the show for us on Facebook. Please share it. Number two, number two, tip the band. Number three, let people know that we're here, we're safe, we're distanced, and we're warm. Take it, Joe!